Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Farm and Pastor's Wife. Today is going to be kind of like a day in the life of, but we're going to, um, I'm going to start off with a recipe I sent, that was sent to me by one of my subscribers. I tried it out yesterday, so let's hit that up really fast, and then we'll get on with our day in the life of. Hey, darling, can I tell you what's been on my mind? Sick and tired of the nine to five in the city light Hey darling We could get out of town See the beautiful world around Wanna see it now Pack our bags and get in that car real far Let's get out We can leave this city Let's drive to the open air Yeah, the countryside Hey everyone, welcome to the Farm and Pastor's Life. I'm so glad you're here. My name is Leslie. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome down here on l &B Farm in my kitchen where we are making a subscriber recipe today. Um, this subscriber calls this candy apple salad. So, I am super excited. It's very unusual. Can't wait to try it and I can't wait for you to join me. If you're new here, I'd love for you to hit subscribe, hit that bell notification, and be sure to give me a thumbs up and share my videos. Okay, so intro is a great time to subscribe. So, let's roll the intro. Okay, everyone, so by the sound of the recipe, you would think I'm using candied apples. I'm not. I'm just using regular apples, but there is a candy twist, so stay tuned for that. But we're going to start right here in my mixing bowl. We're going to start with one cup of powdered sugar, and I just grabbed the first measuring cup I grabbed, and it was a third of a cup, so we'll use three of those. All right, and to that, we're gonna add one block, one eight ounce block of cream cheese. Now, the recipe does not call for what I'm fixing to add. I mean, it calls for the cream cheese, but I'm just gonna give a little splash of vanilla. I think it, I'm just, you know, I gotta make, I gotta do something, something in this recipe to leslie it, so we're just gonna put just a splash of vanilla. Doesn't really change a whole lot. There we go. That's all we're doing. All right, let me put my beaters on my hand mixer and we'll give this a whisk. And I want to get all that powdered sugar mixed in there. I know y'all are beating, so, I mean, shaking, so let me stop you just for a minute. Okay, so to this mixture, we're going to add in an 8-ounce tub of Cool Whip, Whip Topping. I always call it Cool Whip, but, you know, Whip Topping. You could definitely make your own. And I'm just going to fold it in, keeping it nice and fluffy. I like to turn my bowl too when I'm folding in whipped cream. And I cut the cr mixture in half sometimes. Sometimes I go all the way from the back and then sometimes I cut it in the middle just because we want to be sure and get it mixed well. Okay. So here's this. We're going to set this aside. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take a few apples, about uh, six to eight apples. I'm not sure how many I have here. Um, and we're going to peel them and top them up. You could probably leave the peel on, um, but I'm not just because my little grandbabies may be eating it. Um, and I'm not sure how much they like the peeling. So we're going to peel this. And I'll show you the size I'm going to chop them, and I'll be right back. 
Okay guys, I have a wedge right here and I'm just gonna cut that wedge, I don't know, into about four to five pieces there, five pieces. And I'm gonna go ahead and just throw those in the whipped cream just to keep them from turning. I don't want them to turn yellow or anything. Okay, I'm gonna chop up about six to eight apples, we'll see. And I'll meet you back here in just a minute. Okay, everyone, I just finished putting the last apple in. Um, I think I ended up doing maybe seven apples, um, but you could do more or less depending on your taste. Now, she does say in her recipe to mix the apples and the nuts and our surprise ingredient together and then add it. And I can see why now, but I just wanted to get the apples in here so they wouldn't turn on me and I didn't want to mess up anything that I didn't have to. So I should have listened to her. So. But anyway, um, I'm going in with a cup of toasted pecans. Cup of toasted pecans. And I'm just going to go ahead and give them a stir. I'm going to mix them around. You know, you may like more apples or more nuts. You just do this to your liking. I'm sure this recipe is very forgiving and adjustable. I love recipes that are adjustable. Okay, now for the surprise ingredient. There you go. We're actually putting candy in the candy apple salad. Now the recipe calls for two regular sized Milky Ways and she has a note here that says or more. And um, so, I'm going, I think she said she used, I, thought, where, I don't know where I thought she said she used four candy bars. Maybe not. Anyway, I could not find, our store did not have like regular size. So I just bought these fun size and I'm going to take a few out and I'm going to chop them up into bite-sized pieces. I've had them in the refrigerator, so they're really cold. Let's see, I was gonna go this way. And then this way. How's that? And I'm just gonna drop them in here. All right, I'm gonna finish chopping these up. I'm gonna do about, let's see, that was one. Let's see, that's probably one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of the fun size pieces. I think that'll be fine. Okay, I'll bring you back as soon as I've got them all chopped up. Okay, everybody, I've gotten, some of them are already in the bowl and I wanna put these in the bowl now. And we're just gonna mix this up. It's a good thing I don't like Milky Ways. <laughs> now, I would love them in this, like eating it with this, but just to sit down and eat a Milky Way, I'm not a Milky Way fan. I love Snickers, though. So, if I if this was Snickers, I would be in trouble. You know what? I may put some more Milky Ways in here because I want a Milky Way in, or whoever eats it, I want them to get a Milky Way in every bite. I'm going to finish out that bag, y'all. I am, I am. I actually think it could use some more nuts. Good. I don't have any more nuts. Okay, I'm going to put a few more Milky Ways. I'm going to stick it in the refrigerator and we'll have Bryant taste it when he um, comes in. He's working hard on the farm. He's doing a dirty, stinky job. He is crusting. Even the name sounds gross. But he is crusting the chicken houses. He is going in and taking that cruster machine and taking out the top layer of the chicken litter. Which, <clears throat> excuse me, which if you've watched my channel, you know what chicken litter is. It's not trash that you throw out the car window. <laughs> it's not that kind of litter. Okay guys, I'm gonna add some more Milky Ways and get this in the refrigerator. 
Um, she does say in her recipe that this is best the next day. It's not going to make it to the next day for us, but it is best if you make it and let it sit. So I'm going to add some more Milky Way. I'll see you when Bryant comes in to taste it. Okay, everybody. Well, as you know, Isaac is fixing to move out and I'm going to be an official empty nester. So, in honor of him moving out, he gets to do this taste test of the apple since I can't taste it. And um, so he's going to tell us. No, what is this? Is this the thing you had the Milky Ways in? Yes. Oh, no, I get the first bite. I get the first bite. Not oh. you, Levi. Hang on. We're going to get Levi a bite too. He wants a bite too. Oh. Mm. Yummy. That's really good. Really good? <laughs> Levi's, about, been, Levi's been eating it and then he'll take his fingers and get the Milky Ways out of his teeth. Something about the the apples with the chocolate and the cream, it, it works. It works it really good. When, when we would go camping when they were little, I used to take an apple and hollow it out and stick a Snickers down in it. Do you remember that? Yeah. We'd stick a little Snickers candy and then wrap it up and bake it in the fire. And um, it kind of reminds me a little bit of that with the chocolate in the apple. So, it is really good. Um, it's a it's a refreshing kind of light, but yet rich dessert. I don't know how that. It's odd. It, it, it is an odd combination because it's mm -hmm. light and fluffy and refreshing, but also with some richness of the chocolate. So okay, all right, stay tuned for the rest. Okay, so that was that recipe. I love intriguing recipes that subscribers send me. I don't always make them on camera, um, just because. You know, what if I didn't like them type thing. But um, that one I thought was pretty intriguing sounding, so I decided to make it. Um, today is Friday morning. Last night we did our live video um, that, where we discussed Bryant's anxiety. So if you didn't see that, be sure to go check that out. Um, I think that ministered to a lot of people. So um, today I woke up with a headache. I don't ever I used to have migraines like bad migraines as a young mother a young adult mother I've had them since I was five years old and sometime in my 30s they just stopped maybe I was in my late I, I don't know I think I was in my early 30s they just stopped I mean I would have to go get shots and I would vomit with them. They were bad. Anyway, so I just stopped having migraines. Like, totally. Haven't had them in years. And this is not a migraine. It's just a headache. And, but I don't ever have headaches. So I'm like, oh no, what's wrong with my head? Um, so the I've got Judah and Levi this morning. They hadn't got here yet. They should be here any minute, but I've just kind of been dozing off and on in the recliner. I got up at 4.30, and um, I've just been sitting in the recliner resting. I don't know why I'm resting. It's not like that's going to help, but I did get me something to eat, and I took some Advil, and I've just been, I've had the YouTube on, but turned down really low, and laying here and just resting. So, as soon as the boys get here, though... It's going to be wide open, and i got to get up. The Advil has started to kick in, and I can tell um, the headache is easing up. So, I don't know what today holds. Um, we're going to see. So, just come join me. All right, everybody. This is one of the dirtiest, nastiest jobs that I do. Uh, if you've been following our channel for, for a while, you know that uh, we've showed you this all oh, probably about a year or so ago. Um, in between the flocks, you have to do what is called crusting, or some people call it decaking, okay? Um, and what you have happen is when the chickens get under the uh, drinker line to get their water, that there's an excess of water that falls to the ground. And when that water falls to the ground and it hits the shavings, the sawdust, and the litter, um, when it dries back out, it creates a cake particle. Hang tight and let me show you what that looks like. All right, it's kind of hard to see, but I'm going to show you in the chicken house right here. You see this big old clump stuff right here? That is hard. Uh, some people call it pan. Some people call it cake. 
but you have those right under the drinker lines. You see those drinker lines ran up to the ceiling right there? Right under those drinker lines is called the cake. And what I have to do is I take that machine and I go through and it, what it does is it cuts under that cake and it grinds it up. Let me show you what it looks like once it's already been caked. All right, here we are. I've already ran the cruster through here and you can see it is very fine particles. Uh, there's no cake there. And what, what you have happened, that's sawdust and, and chicken litter right there. And you want it that fine because uh, in, in that caking, um, there's moisture. And in that moisture, there's ammonia. And in ammonia, uh, it's not good for you to breathe or the birds to breathe. And so that's what happens. You can see where I took the machine, went down through there. You can see there's been two passes made there. But over there, I hadn't made any passes. So I'm going to take you out here and describe the machine to you. All right, this machine kind of does four different things. Let me show you what it does. Look down here, Leslie. This right here, and get down here really low, this is the cutter bar. What that is, is that bar right there scoops under that cake that I showed you, okay? It scoops under that cake, and when it scoops under that cake, it lifts it up, and then these beater bars, you see these bars here? They rotate, and they kind of grind up that caking. They're offset, okay? So they're offset, so as it rotates it's it's beating those clumps up and grinding those clumps up now what it also does is this conveyor here rotates and as this conveyor rotates it picks up show them a couple clumps of litter on there it picks up those clumps of litter and what it does is it takes and conveys that litter now if it's smaller than this hole right here it falls back down to the ground but if it's that size right there or bigger what happens is it conveys up into this hopper and then it goes into this hopper bottom. And then uh, when we get it back here to the litter shed, you see back there in the very back, there's a litter shed back there, that building that you see behind the chicken house. I carry it back there. And then there's a conveyor belt on the inside of this thing right here. See that conveyor chain? And you can see some cake in there. That conveyor chain this gate on the back of this machine will lift up and uh, it will uh, allow the litter to come out. So that's what the machine looks like. Some people call it a cruster. Some people call it a decaker. Some people call it a housekeeper. Um, here in North Carolina, I call it a cruster. And so uh, this is a, a very, very uh, important piece of equipment to the poultry operation. Hang tight and we're gonna let you see this thing in action. Hey, Brian. Brian, before we see it in action, yep. why don't you explain to them why we even keep the litter? Why is okay. that important to keep it and what could it be used for? Okay, we keep all of our litter because it is free fertilizer. I took a sample of our chicken litter, sent it off to North Carolina State University and had it analyzed for all the um, uh, natural ingredients that's needed for good fertilizer. That chicken litter is 27% nitrogen. Uh, we could sell every load that we wanted to because all the farmers around here, it makes your grass green, it makes your crops grow, and it's a very sought after commodity in this area. But because of the size of our farm and the beef cow operation that we have and the hay operation, we need it here. So I will keep all the litter for our farm and I'll spread it. I got a spreader truck. Tomorrow you'll see me spreading in a spreader truck. I know some of you've seen it before, uh, but we keep all the litter for ourselves. It's pretty important. It's kind of like putting natural resources back in the ground for free. So. And our chickens are organic, so yep. which in turn makes this fertilizer organic. Organic. That's right. <laughs> Hang tight. We'll let you see it in action. Okay, guys, it's going to get a little loud, <laughs> and hopefully you can hear me. But you can see the litter uh, as the conveyor belt goes up, it's kind of bouncing around, knocking out any of the fine because we want to keep as much fine, loose, sandy like litter in the house as we can, but we want that big stuff out, the hard cakey stuff. So you can see why it is a dirty, dusty job. Look at all the dust it's creating around that machine.
Okay guys, here's what we call the stack house or the litter shed. Uh, it is where we store our litter until it's time for us to take it and spread it on the fields. Um, here is our spreader truck and he's purchased, if you remember, the burnt up truck. The one, that one over there. <laughs> Can you see that one way over there? He's going to take the bed off of that and make it into a spreader truck. So we'll have two going. He already has the bed. So, um, but anyway, yeah, that's what he'll spread the litter with. And this building is where we store it. You can actually see where he has um, unloaded several loads of chicken litter. So yeah, he'll be around here in just a little bit to unload this load and I'll show you that process. Alright guys, this is, uh, this is the end of the uh, tutorial on the Cruster Chicken House Housekeeper had. Just want to show you guys, you can see all those piles that is all crusted litter. So you can understand the litter part of this shed is 100 feet long by 42 feet wide. Uh, so it's 100 by 42. There's probably, if you look in here right now with the amount of litter I've got, there's probably about 30 spreader truck loads of uh, fertilizer right there. So uh, tomorrow we'll be spreading the joy. Hey everybody, we are at Sam's Club. Brian is getting us a drink over there. We are ready to check out, well, we've already checked out. I do the Scan and Go. If you don't have the Scan and Go app, get the Scan and Go app. Cause sometimes there's sales that you only get if you do the Scan and Go. Uh, I don't know if any of mine today was that, but um, I bought a rotisserie chicken. We needed some toilet paper. Needed a couple things for the coffee nook at church. I needed some tin pans. So we went ahead and picked that up because Bryant has a doctor's appointment. We were early for it, you know, just a little checkup. So we are um, decided to run by Sam's first. So I'm just waiting on him to get our drink and then we're gonna head to the car. Okay y'all, so now we are headed to the church. We're leaving uh, a little town north of us called High Point and we're headed back to the church we're feeding the football team tonight and Bryant is doing devotions the, the a lot of the workers are there and the cooks are there already fixing the food um, Bryant's gonna rush in and um, he's gonna pray with them have devotions with them and then he may try to go to the game tonight I'm not sure um, I'm probably gonna take a nap in the car or something <laughs> Cause I'm still not a hundred percent today. So, um, we got, we got three of our youth that play on this team. Yeah. Three, three guys in our church are on this football team. At least three, at least, three. at least three. Um, there may be more if there's some of the younger ones playing. At least. So, okay. All right. We'll see you in a minute. A little bit this afternoon. Uh, in Philippians chapter two, Paul is writing.
Okay, everybody, we're home. We went to Sam's. We went to the football thing. We went to the doctor's. Um, now we're back home. He's getting ready to go to the actual football game. And Caroline and I are going to run to Hobby Lobby for a minute. And then I'm coming home and I'm going to bed because I just have not been 100% today. So I hope you enjoyed the apple dessert. It was very unique, very different. So if you're wanting something unique and something different, um, it did remind me so much of those when I would do the apples and stick the Snickers down in it and bake them. Kind of reminded me a little bit of that. But anyway, all right, I'll see you guys on Sunday for our weekend wrap up and you'll probably get a little bit of, I don't know what you'll get. You'll hey, definitely hey. get him. All right, so uh, I will see you guys on Sunday. Thank you for watching The Farm and Pastor's Wife. Love you guys so much. Don't forget, if you missed our live the other night where Bryant talked about his bout with anxiety, fear, and depression and his ultimate victory over it, then be sure to go check that out. Um, it was our latest live, which was actually last night. So, all right, we'll see you guys later. Remember, if the grease is hot enough, you can fry anything. Bye, y'all.